The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. We have a very interesting comment in the den by Duffy in a picture. He said, uh, here we go, the Bugatti Chiron, I don't know if they call it a Chiron or a Chiron, on an Autobahn, 417 kPa uh, kilometers per hour. Um, and it actually shows you here. I didn't actually look at the picture, but it does give you the picture. And that's really interesting because um, when I wrote my way back in the 1986, 87, 88, when I was uh, my part of the time and I was asked uh, to do, um, I'd written this thing on the mega bull market still to come. And I we were asked by the, um, the, Almost editor or assistant editor, editor, I think, Kate Welling to uh, elaborate on that. And I wrote a whole thing which we've had here in uh, Tiger TV, uh, Tiger in, uh, as a kind of a, a comment, but uh, it's more than a comment. It came out as a book. Uh, it was called The Psychology of Investing. And this was part of a discussion that was at the Harvard Medical School. Psychology of Investing conference that was that was back in 1999, I think, um, and it was it produced as a book, uh, edited by Lifson, and I have a chapter called "The Mega Bull Market Still to Come," and my opening paragraph was um, uh, 250 mile per hour cars, t uh, TV. I think I said TV at McDonald's. I had just a, 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 a mega boats the size of cities, and uh, that was back in the late 1980s. And of course, we had that mega bull market. And uh, but the the issue here is that there's a parallel historically. It's just I mean you can go back to the 1920s. You can actually go back to the 1880s, 1890s, whereby speed, automobile speed skyscrapers, mega everything. That is just massive for that particular time. Massive, massive edifices are built, bridges, all that, all that sort of thing. And I think that we, we've been waiting for that particular code, of, I call it the coda phase, where it leads towards a really strong market, market collapse. Um, I, I'm wondering if we aren't starting to get there and we've got to get through this particular phase, a very difficult phase, but we've got to get through it. And then we're off to the races, as they would say. So I'm, I'm monitoring this, and I've been doing that for a while now, the electric cars, but it isn't just electric. The uh, gas-powered cars are producing incredible, uh, you know, horsepower like you've, you've never had before. Now, of course, in the electric it's the zero to 60 or zero to 100 factor that is just incredible. Uh, and then the sustaining power. Well, gas automobiles have the sustaining power. So I'm watching this very closely. Uh, and I know that there's talk of the major crash, etc. I I must say I'm not in that camp at all at this time. I am later on, maybe 2023, maybe 24. I don't know. But I don't think it's yet. And when it happens... It's going to be where people all around the world are at their monitors trade, trying to trade the stock market, mostly American stocks. And when that final thing comes, we will only know it won't be uh, – it will be something that is – it impacts families, and the families won't even know it's happening because there will be maybe one person within that family that is trading their account and just blows up completely. And nobody actually knows until days or maybe a month or so later. And uh, so that sounds terrible. I don't even want to go there. I do want to go to the fact that this market, um, when you've gone from 18,213 March of 2020, doubling in the Dow to 36,952, this is 
There's nothing wrong with this as a correction. It becomes a lot more than a correction if you suddenly start to see the Dow under 26,000. Then you have to say, uh-oh, what coda phase? Boy, that's the uncoda phase. Um, so we're not there. In fact, this is still, even though this is September and you've finally got the uh, nine period moving in the month chart underneath the 14 period moving average, uh, the month is young. And anything can happen, you know, September's really choppy. Usually you're very choppy. <laughs> so let's just see what happens. Last year, September was right here. September, uh, oh, uh, July, August. So was that September? There it is. So look at that big red candle for September of 2021. High of 35,471 and uh, 2,000 points low at 33,600. 13, it makes a low, and then we move up for four months. Yeah, for, for another four months to the high in January. So anything can happen uh, in September, we'll, we'll have to see. Oh, well, with that said, that preamble that could really have you ready to jump out of the window. Uh, let's get back to the market, and uh, here we go. Uh, that's a question. I'll go to question right away. Thoughts on, on NAT? So I've been following NAT for decades. I remember when the guy came on, uh, Nordic American tanker shipping. I can't remember the, the guy's name. He has a very uh, strong accent. Uh, speaks very well, very well, very good English. And it was somewhere around going into the high of, oh, I haven't got the notations anymore. So it was somewhere around on the way down in 2010, maybe 2011. And he was saying, we've, we've not we failed to give a dividend. I, I think it's every quarter for the last 34 years, whatever it was, it was fantastic. And I looked at the stock and I thought, gosh, dividends every quarter for X number of, not years, but decades. That is amazing. And, uh, I remember him being interviewed by uh, Jim Cramer, and it was very impressive. And then I watched the stock go from that level in the 20, high 20s, 30s, down to somewhere in the single digits, like one, one something, or maybe two. I had a huge rally to nine, came all the way back to the most recent low, the most recent low is, did I type that in? No, I didn't, at about 1.80. Well, 1.80 to 287, where it is right now, is a fantastic rally. And then it had over the last two days, I don't know whether that's news, whatever it is, a fabulous breakout to the upside. And I have to consider, since the starting point was at 180, that this pullback A, B, C, 1, C, 2, yeah, I don't want to do that. That this is still in a, either it's a brand new leg B or it's a G slash B. But whatever it is, the MACD is just about to cross positive. The stochastic is still very weak at 59%. On balance volume in the daily blue is still very good. In fact, a tad overbought. The 9 pre moving average yesterday crossed over the... Excellent act. Nordic rate tax. NH going to 287.1% of the today. And 294 and now it's 287. I'll be back in a moment. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, uh, folks. So we're looking at uh, Nax, which is Nordic uh, American tanker shipping. Unchanged at 286. It had a big spike this morning. What a huge move. I'm percentage move is, is massive. Um, and what I'm looking at here is that I'm going to call it a leg B for now. Uh, probably should put G slash B because there is a chance of an alternate count. But really, the MACD is close to turning up. It's good, good action. If you look at the weekly, there was a left side, right side price time match. And it got there. It hasn't quite made it to the level that I would be looking at, which is 2, 295, the high of the 29th of April. Uh, what did it say? 20. Oh, 295, yes. So today's high is 294, missed it by a penny. But the, you can see this is, the, this is a more conservative Chapman Wave inside, uh, inside wedge target resistance line right here. Uh, I do not like peak Ds underneath previous major highs and then failing. I like to see the breakout of the last peak, in this case peak B, around about 3... Uh, 35 at 335 week in, in, in April. I want to see that taken out in leg C um, uh, so that you still got a D to come. But if we pull back in, then in a weekly chart in the next two weeks without taking out 3.15, we actually pull back and then start a higher high in leg D. That's just saying you've used up a tremendous amount of energy, but you haven't really broken out. It's fabulous, but you haven't broken out. And what you said in the um, what you said in the Tiger chat is that, whoops, uh, have I lost that now? No, I can't, surely not. And there it is. Uh, they, they, they mentioned they're going to, they had plans to continue increasing the dividends, lowest debt in ages, highest daily rates in ages. Yeah, yeah, I love all that, but why the heck isn't it in the 350 area? Or, or yeah, you know, that's the thing. So it means that there are other things that are going on, all right? So let's just treat it as a chart. I know that you have a, a much higher long-term target 
I, funnily enough, also have that for Nordic, but we don't have it in our portfolio. I thought about it, and funnily enough, as it hit the 200-period moving average of 236, I did see it there. And I thought, what's the risk here? Well, I just decided that based on the weekly chart, remember, that's not a great pattern in the weekly chart at that point. Now it's much, much better. So I like what I'm seeing. I also like the fact that it's uh, trying its best to, to, to push towards uh, the threes. I like that. So, yes, what I would say is under 265, you never know with these things. It sounds 265, that's, I mean, today's low is 270. Why are you thinking to, you never know with these things. So if it breaks under 265, you're going to have to wait a lot longer. But I do like it very much. Would I add to it now since you've, you've got it in a position? I don't know if you're in, in a, uh, running a, a, with a profit right now. Uh, I think for risk reward, if this was a fresh question, would I buy it? Would I sell it? Would I just leave it alone? I would actually nibble as 288. If you can get it with a better risk reward, but it can only touch it and then it has to move higher in the two. 84 area, $2.84, give it about a, you have to give it some kind of a, a stop, a 15 cent stop just initially. And if you get it and it starts to rally and in the next two, three days takes out the high today of 294, then that's a that's really good action. Then, I'm, then I can say to you, the weekly chart is really starting to improve a lot. Stochastics at 80% in the weekly, Magdi's good, nine, everything's good. It's just that it's gotten to see way underneath that high that was made, what, about, I want to say, 335 back in April. But other than that, it's looking good. The monthly chart needs a lot of work. But, of course, my rule of thumb with this in, inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle from uh, April says that if it can trade it to, oh, right here, 288. If it can do that, it's a monthly chart. In this case, it's such a low-priced one. I'm going to not give it a day. I'm going to give it a week. If on Friday... It can close above 283. That means that that weekly chart has a really good chance of going higher. And the monthly chart says there's a ch chance that we could have the next big move up at the 335 level. So closing Friday above 283, $2.83 would be a really good sign to say the weekly chart is going to improve. And it hints that the monthly chart has a chance to go towards the left side high. Well, of course, the weekly chart would also do that. All right, enough of that. Let's let's go to other things. Uh, let me question. Uh, okay, let's go to UNG. Oh, UNG, yeah. UNG right now is down quite sharply after that peak E. Remember, I love the way markets just look. Cup formation, art formation does it over and over. It could be a V shape, but it's the same thing. Going from one point like the weekly did, sharply down, then back again above it. Now, I'd call this a peak B because there's no H in the Chevrolet methodology. It doesn't mean to say you couldn't have a pretty decent consolidation here, but I do anticipate that in 2022, you're going to see prices higher than 35 in the UNG, which is the United States Natural Gas Fund, on a short-term basis. And this is impacting one of our stocks as well that we are still holding, um, which is in the natural gas area, although it's had a fantastic move to the upside, just like natural gas. It, too, is pulling back. It, too, is pulling back. 27.52 right now. There's a chance it could even test the 26 is what you don't want to see is a close under 26, getting into the 25s so that there's a chance that the nine period in the weekly chart starts to go under the 14 period moving average if that weakness persists. I think this is a sell off after a huge move to the upside. Would I get in UNG right now? I would much rather see strength and then a test. So I'm going to say I would hold off. And I would wait until either Friday or Monday. And if it's trading above 29.38, that was the high of yesterday, and starts to fill that gap, I'd say, great, that's much better action. And then I'll reanalyze re it and say, yes, let's see. Yes, now you have a risk of retesting the low that was made. But at the same time, it does say that you're starting to show the kind of strength on a bounce that needs to be sustained. And if it is sustained, that 14-period moving average in the weekly chart, which is sitting on right now, 
suddenly becomes support. So I'm just saying it's had a spectacular move. Give it a little time. But now when I say time, look what happened. The time that it took, left side, right side, to break out to the upside. And if I do that on the left side to the high that was made, it says we're actually now extending a little bit in time. Uh, you've got until tomorrow. A break under the low of yesterday of 27.08 says be careful because now you can go all the way back to test the low of 26. So I'm just saying hold off on, on UNG. I like it longer term, meaning intermediate term. But I, I do believe this has to be a peak. Be based on the Chevrolet methodology. I've tried to count it umpteen ways. It just doesn't work. It should go to a high, high start of leg C and then a leg D in 2022. But I do believe you need, you've probably got about another a week's worth of consolidation. Also, don't forget you're getting into the natural gas. I believe this is the cycle that natural gas starts to act much better. Hope that helps. I'll be right back. That was a If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Uh, a couple of questions came in. Uh, I said I'll get to them if, I, if, if it fits the format that I have today. Um, and one of them was, uh, could you... It's good that you... Basically, I'm just summarizing. It's good that you show the instant restart whenever it occurs. We're starting to learn it very nicely. But could you also, I'm doing two things at once, you change the style. No, what's going on here? Oh, you just broke out. So uh, I'm, I'm very upset because three times today I was about to go back into the long position that we had. Um, we were stopped out of one of them uh, yesterday. I was upset about just stopped out. 
I wanted to get back in, and I thought there'll be time. But in fact, it re- I think in many ways it was a good time, even though the Fed speech comes on, well, just the, the minutes come on at about 2 o'clock this afternoon. They, they looked to me to be such an oversold near-term condition. And uh, most importantly, what we're looking at here is that the S&P is up 23 and the, and the Dow is up 172. I don't think I've actually been, have I been through? Oh, I did it in the market update. I haven't been through it. So here's the instant restart. Look, in the one-minute chart of the E-mini, the low that was made at 8.55 this morning at 38.97.25 went to peak A, peak B, peak C. Then it stalled and hung around the 200 period moving average for quite a while, about uh, 12, 13 minutes, and it went to a peak D. And then within two, within three bars, it went from that peak D high, it went to a higher high. And the rule of thumb in the Chapway methodology is that you've got to consider there's a chance of an instant restart, meaning there could be a brand new move to another four higher peaks. There's no technique in the world that does that, that I know of. I'm, I'm the only one that's, I created the Chapway methodology, and this peak D instant restart took a long time to, I, I didn't develop it, I just discovered it over a lot of mistakes, a lot of successes, and then finally I said, oh, that is a technique. And then what happens when you get to G, I go call it G slash C because it's an alternate wave all the way up. And very often it stalls and it gets to a D and then it pulls back sharply. That's exactly what it did. And where did it pull back to? It pulled back to test the 200 period moving average. Is that not a fantastic technique? And remember what I was talking about in that uh, Nordic, uh, Nordic, uh, the shipper. And I said that I wanted after a peak D, I want to see leg C power right through that previous D. That's fabulous action. That's called the Chapman Wave uh, cup and ladle pattern. And that cup and ladle pattern says there should be a strong move that should take you to D, but you've created a support level, unlike a cup and ladle, a cup and handle, which is one of the weakest patterns you can find unless you get it perfectly. And even then, the handle invariably gets tested. The cup and ladle says you keep going higher. You've turned the left side high that you passed, which in this case was 39.30 at 10 minutes to 9.48 into support which you can test, but there's a very good chance that you're going to go to a leg D. That's how exciting that uh, leg cup and ladle is. All right, enough with that. So I showed you three uh, three things here. One is chapter wave instant restart that can go to another four legs up, four peaks high up to D, pull back. Uh, and then if it breaks out after that and takes out that left side high before it gets to D, preferably in C, that's very bullish. That's called a cup and ladle. And I usually put it in like this. I say, uh, right here, I got Chapman Wave, cup and ladle. Why? Because it looks like a ladle. Look, there's your, well, it's more like a bowl. And there's that handle that goes up and it pulls back a little bit. And then there should be another push to D. And then you've, you, you've it's kind of done its job. Uh, and I'll put cup and ladle. I don't know if it's going to work, but to peak D. All right, let's just have it in and we'll see what happens. All right, here we go. So that's three techniques. Instant restart goes to G slash C. That says if there's a little bit of a dip and then it goes to um, starts to rally again, that rally could go to a D. And then be careful because you could pull back sharply. Well, you did that. And uh, so that was two techniques. And the other one was... Uh, using the 200 period moving average in this particular instance, if there's a breakout above that left side high in leg C, that's called the Chapman Wave Cup and Ladle potential, and it says you should try then to go to at least a D, and then you can have a longer time-wise pullback. All right, we're not I'm done with that. Let's get back to our story. So this is, let me just do this quickly. I did this during the uh, update, but I need to do it again. Uh, here we go. So the Dow, I-N-D-U, is trading very nice candle so far today. Above yesterday's low of 31, was that 182? No, I think it was a little bit lower. 31,048, 31, You're up, uh, wow, almost 300 points from that, 31,338. That's a nice, that's a nice candle. 
uh, low lows and lower highs we'll be making, uh, except for one or two little troughs. This is trough C if there's no new low today. But that weekly chart is still saying, you know, there's a lot of work to be done to break out. Looking at the S&P, uh, where would a breakout be if by Wednesday, what's today, Wednesday? Yes, a week from today, if the Dow is able to break above 31,800 and try to get to 32,080, that'll be that'll be really good action. If instead it just keeps choppy, 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 sideways action, more like a rectangle, having to make another low before it really gets going, that's just going to use up usurp time as well as energy. Uh, 3932 up 24 in the S&P. Making a leg D to the downside, lowercase on the way down, uppercase on the way up. So it's a leg D, possible trough today. Uh, unless the Fed really, something happens and it just knocks things for a loop. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that we could have a little bit of weakness maybe into Thursday, Friday, maybe even into Monday. But sometime next week, I think that we should have a very good counter trend rally. Uh, so we're looking at the S&P. Uh, needing to get to 39.89 to touch the pink nine period moving average. That is 60 points. That is 50 to 60 points from here. That's a big ask in this particular environment. QQQ, NDX 100, given back some of the gains today, only up $1.40, 294.50. This one's now starting to struggle, even though the weekly chart is holding a lot better, uh, 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 pulling back from the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Um, then the Dow or even the S&P, that doesn't help because the smash from 334 down to two, 397. No, it was lower than that. It was 390.87. 390.87 was the low yesterday. There you are, 390.87. Um, so it's a, a lot of work needs to be done, but it has already reached an e. Some A question came in. Basil, is it possible we having a Chapman Wave instant restart to the downside? I didn't even want to uh, speculate on that. I looked at it over the weekend and I thought, oh, my goodness, this is so close. If there's another lower low, yes, it's possible. And I'm not going to I'm not going to rule it out. I'm just going to say I don't think so. I think at Truff F or G on the QQQ, we're going to get a really good bounce. But if there's a failure, you've got that low that was made on the 14th of July of 279.80. Mm. Don't even think about that. All right, let's get back to our story here. Uh, IWM is acting a little weaker today. It was acting weaker. Now it's acting a little stronger, up $1.35 at 179.66. Ugly candles on the last uh, two sessions. So this session is really important to hold. Uh, and let's go to gold right now. I want to see what gold is. Gold is actually now up 10 to 17.22. Oh, oh, oh. Let's go to the dollar. Dollar is pulling back just a little bit. It's at 110.53, uh, up 27 ticks in leg E. Weekly chart leg E, monthly chart leg C. I'll be back. Guys, up You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, everyone. We're back, and the question came up. Uh about first solar can you do an analysis of first solar well, i hadn't finished the i had a long time ago done the uh, monthly chart so this is going to be very interesting why because in the den uh craft says let's see i don't know what the, i'm just following up on a story that i see craft i don't know who craft is says inflation will get to 20 percent oh no that's that's not the issue oh it's yeah after huge victory for the clean energy industry organizations like the Solar Energy Industry Association plan to focus more on selling the merits of clean energy products to people affected by them. Uh, and they go on to talk about that. So I thought, OK, I'll grab uh, First Solar because I was doing work on this uh, for the last couple of days. I've been following it closely and it's just squeaking away to higher highs. And it's really important. It's in a leg F, uh, sorry, peak F in the daily, but this could easily be an alternate count. It could be a G slash C if it makes a higher high today above the high of the 2nd of September of 130.95. Today it's 130.69, so it's about another less than 30 cents and it goes uh, to new uh, recovery high. Look at the spectacular move in the weekly chart, uh, basically going from the 60s uh, just about a month and a half ago, two months ago, now at 129, I would definitely call that a double. That's spectacular action. Not all of the solar area has done this. So this is a fantastic stock. So, um, and my question to myself has been, I've had it on my list, um, on my watch list for so long, and yet I haven't done anything with it. I'm not sure why, because it's an area that I think is rife for uh, um, expansion. And look, there's this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone in the monthly chart. So remember, we're looking at this here. I've seen it so many times lately. Oh, I always forget to look down at all my notes that I write for every day because I get so carried away with the questions that come in, etc. And look, we've got right here. It's not clicking. Why is Oh, there it is. So we've got a little Chapman Wave inside track on the daily chart. Just slightly higher highs. This is the pattern that says either you break significantly to the upside for almost like a, a rising falling X pattern, or you start to pull back and you fill in some of it, in this case going to the 125, 122 area. Uh, that's the daily, but the, and because the MACD is kind of weak. Uh, and this is one of those areas where I've taught people for so long when I give my courses, there are you've got you can't just rely on one indicator. You can when it gets to the end of a run. There's a particular indicator that's really important. But look at this. If you use the MACD, you would have got out of this at this peak G. You would have said, oh, peak G or C1, C2, pulling back sharply, and that was around about the 15th or so of August. And yet, look, 
The stochastic went under 80%. It's now at 83%. That's good. On balance volume is really good. It's a little overbought. But the MACD has been negative since uh, the beginning, since the middle of August. And they would have said, oh, man, be careful. No. Look how strong the 9 is above the 14. And it's still very strong, even though there could be a little bit of a short-term pullback. It's going to take a move below 115 for the uh, for the nine to cross negative, so this is still very positive. So, on a daily basis, the only way if you're very long term oriented, then the only way you can look at this is to say I'm going to start a position here. Preferably, you actually do it with a call option. In the money call option is at 129.89. Uh, uh, maybe you go to if there's 127.50, you can buy that, and you go out. You go look. This is this is um, September. You go to October, November, and you say this is the position I want, and I've got my foot in the door. But or you can split it up into three positions. You say look, this is overbought by any measure right now, even though the technicals are good. But it could still go a little higher. So I'd like to nibble here at 120. You remember like the Amazon, just nibble to get a feel. And I've said, I don't want to do anything yet with Amazon. But in this particular case, with um, First Solar FSLR, up 2.23 at 129.82, I would say you could nibble here, but it's really just a starter position. It's a little more than a nibble. Nibble says if you're going to buy 100 or you're going to buy 20, a very, very small portion of that would be entering right now, even if it's just a couple of shares. Right now, but your real thing is what happens if it takes out the the high that was made at 120, 121.91. Let's call it 122. If that 122 high gets taken out, that was from mid-August. Then there's this whole area between 122 and 100, even 15, that could be a digestive phase. So, I would think of it as a starter position knowing that there's a greater chance that it starts a, a digestive phase than a breakout phase. What I mean by a breakout phase is that it breaks out to the extent that it turns 126 into support because it's trading at 133. I just don't, I don't know if it's going to do that right now. But I would then start my, my real position, the first part of a real position, on a pullback and see how it holds the 14 period moving average, which it hasn't even since it broke above right there when it crossed positive uh, back in the 19th of July at 67. It's not even touched that 14 period moving average. It's walked the nine period moving average. This is really good action. Now let me get back to the monthly. And I'm just going to say within this context, it's in a very strong up channel, but it's at the Chapman Wave inside track. There we are. So this is there, and there's it's, it's in an up channel, beautiful up channel, high highs, higher lows. This is a much more severe pullback, but look at that big rally. So it's had these big moves, and then it gives it has a digestive phase. So that just says in the monthly chart. I'm wondering now. This is not an all-time high because I remember the screaming once upon. Oh, there you go. Okay, the all-time high was in 2008. And I remember when all these um, solar stocks were just powering higher. Uh, it went to 317.00. How about that for a round number? Everybody, applause. Round number, 317. Uh, round number high. Amazing. Okay, dropped a little bit. It dropped from 317.00. Back in 2008, to a little bit of a low right there in uh, June. This is the monthly chart, June of 12, 2012, at $11.43. Would you say that that's a bit of a pullback? I'd say it's, what, 95% 90, or something pullback? Anyway, so I don't like to look at stocks as, oh, it was once at 317, it's going back. We've seen that stocks in a particular phase can make a high and then wait years, decades before it gets there. So let's forget about that. But this high that was made right here at 175.45 February of 2011, 
that would be a very big stretch. This this digestive conglomeration right here in the 200 and, I'm sorry, in the 51s, uh, what am I saying, 51s, this particular right there. In the 120s, it says that should be your left side, right side price buy target. I'll do that during the break. I'll be back in a moment. Bells of Chapman, Tide Mitch Sauer, Bells of 160. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. So, yeah, as I said, this uh, first solar is looking very good at 129. It needs to break out and hold the 130, I would I'd say 130, 150 area on a weekly basis to say instead of having a sharp pullback, uh, right now, it has a little bit more of an extension to the upside, um, but this chapter of inside track repellent zone, I suspect it's coming back into it, even if it has a bit of a bounce. So I love the chart, but it's it's a very, as I say, I think an option, a call option would be a better way to do it. A couple of questions. Uh, XOM, XOM is Exxon Mobil. It, it has these big spikes. It has gone to a peak C. It also has this pattern, this, this kind of cup pattern, and it's failing to go to the 105.57 level at 94.26. So this says to me that crude oil is in play, 
uh, in the, the, sorry, the multinationals are in play, but crude oil is really is very significant. That crude oil is finally going. Look at this, crude oil is pulling back very sharply. I had said yesterday a close under the 83 83 level suggests to me that we could start to see other things. In, is this telling us that there's a world uh, depression coming on because crude oil is not in demand? No, there are other factors that are going on as well. And that's the reason why I keep saying check out JETS. Uh, this is the iShares. This is the U.S. Global JETS ETF. It's holding quite nicely up to only 20 cents at 1731. That needs to move very nicely with the IYT, the Transportation Index. Now, here's a couple of things. I wanted to show you. I don't want to run out of time for this ENVX. ENVX, look at these double tops. You know, I've spoken about this for over a year and a half. That's incredible. Our markets make double uh, tradables, go to highs, and they make a double top and then pull back. So ENVX is one. Uh, EA is another. EA on the weekly chart, I believe it is. Uh, no, right here, look at that double top, and then look how sharp it's pulled back. That is Electronic Arts and ECPG. ECPG. Weekly chart. Look at that double top and look at the sharp pullback. Have a great day. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes. Check out my opening call, Daddy News, Adam.